All right, so in the last video in this series, we talked a little bit about getting started with SketchUp if you're a woodworker. So talking about things like modeling out basic shapes, what some of the tools do, other things like that. In this video, I wanted to walk you through your first model. So we're gonna create a table model using the free version of SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this video, I wanna talk about some concepts that we didn't really discuss in the first video, specifically the ability to group geometry to keep it from merging with itself. So we talked last week about how if you draw an object like this, then push pull it, you can get it to 3D, right? Well, one of the things about SketchUp is geometry um, that's just in here like this is known as raw geometry. And what it'll do is it'll merge with other geometry. So let's say that I was to draw a rectangle. So tap the R key, push pull this up. And then I was to take this whole thing and use the move tool to move these together, right? So if I was to move these faces together and then try to move it away, you can see how this geometry sticks together. Well, the problem with geometry sticking together like this is it makes making changes and edits really difficult. And so what you can do is you can select that geometry, right click and click make group in order to group that geometry. Well, what that means is that means that the geometry will no longer merge, right? These are acting as completely different items. And so we're gonna use that concept in order to create our first model. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by modeling out a tabletop. So I'm gonna say that this tabletop is maybe four feet by three feet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our default model and hit the delete key on your keyboard, and then we want to draw a rectangle to that size. So in this situation, you're going to tap the R key to activate the rectangle tool. I'm going to click on this point. I'm going to move my mouse in this direction. Notice how in the lower right hand corner, you're getting dimensions that show you the size of your box. Well, in this situation, we want this box to be four foot by three foot. So we're just going to type in four and then the foot sign comma three in the foot sign and hit the enter key. What that's gonna do is that's gonna create your tabletop. And if we were to measure this using the tape measure, you can see how from this point to this point is three feet, and from this point to this point is four feet. And so now we wanna give this a little bit of thickness, right? So our table is gonna be laying here, and this is gonna be our table top, so we're gonna give it a thickness. And in this case, we'll say it's gonna have an, a thickness of maybe an inch and a quarter. So in order to do that, you're gonna tap the P key on your keyboard, mouse over this, single click. Remember, don't click and drag, you just wanna single click. And then you wanna type in 1.25 and hit the enter key. That's gonna extrude this up an inch and a quarter. And I apologize in advance if this is the wrong thickness. We're gonna go with that for right now. You can push pull this to whatever thickness that you want. But if we were to check this with the tape measure, we could click and then click from here to here and see that this is an inch and a quarter. And so now there's a couple ways we could move forward because what we wanna do is we want to create an apron down below this, right? An apron that's gonna hang down, that's gonna be inset by a certain thickness. And so there's a few ways we could do this. What I'm gonna show you to do right now is to go ahead and group this geometry because we want, we want our apron to be a different group of geometry than our tabletop. So we're just gonna select this by dragging a box across it. We're gonna right click and we're gonna click on make group. And what that's gonna do is that's going to group this table. And so now let's talk about using guides. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna model this table upside down just so you can see what we're doing without having to orbit around. Um, you could also model it right side up and just orbit down below like this. Um, but just for simplicity's sake, let's just model it this way. So one way that you could do this is you could double click into this group in order to edit this face and you could offset this in, right? So you could tap the F key, then single click in order to offset these edges in. So that's a very valid way to do this. It gets a little bit complicated though because you're creating that geometry inside of our group. So instead, let's just use guides in order to do this. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna use the tape measure tool. And what the tape measure tool does is that allows us to create almost like a chalk line inside of our model. It creates a guideline that doesn't really interface with your geometry. So what I've done is I've clicked on my tape measure 
And notice how with my tape measure, there's two little lines and then a plus sign on it. So the two little lines and the plus sign means that this is an add guide mode. So when you're in add guide mode, what that means is that means that tool is going to add a guide whenever you click. So notice how I can click to set a base point, then I can click again in order to add a dotted line. And I can add as many of these in here as I want. Notice how they're not merging with anything or touching anything. They're literally just in here as an indicator that you can snap to. And then we can erase them just by tapping the E key and then clicking and dragging over these lines. So what we want to do is let's say that this is going to be inset by a couple inches. So what we want to do is we want to activate the tape measure tool, make sure we're in create guide mode. If you're not, tap the control key on your keyboard so the little dotted line and the plus shows up. But then you want to click on this edge you want to move your mouse in this direction. So notice how that's allowing you to create a guideline based on spacing that you set inside of your model. And let's say that this is going to be inset maybe six inches. So we're just going to type in a value of six and hit the enter key. What that's done is that's created a guideline that's six inches from this edge. Well now we want to do the exact same thing with the other edges. So we're just going to click on the tape measure, click, Move your mouse, type in six, and hit the enter key. Same thing here, same thing here. So what we've done is we've created a guide in here that shows us where our apron will start. So now I'm gonna activate the rectangle tool by tapping the R key. I'm gonna click on one of these corners. Notice that I single clicked only, I'm not dragging. Then I wanna move my mouse over here, and I wanna click again. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna draw a face on top of your table. Notice that that is outside of this other group so we don't have to worry about our geometry merging together. So if your geometry merges together, that means that you accidentally double clicked on your group and you were editing the inside of that, which is not what you want. You wanna make sure that you're out of your group by moving your mouse off of it and clicking. And so now we have this face in here. Well, now that we have this face, we can just offset this in. We don't need to use guides again. So we can just tap the F key to activate offset, and then we can just single click and move our mouse. And let's say that this is going to be, we'll call this an inch and a half. So we'll just type in 1.5 and hit the enter key. Well, what that's done is that's offset this face in by an inch and a half. So now we just need to push pull this, right? We need to give it some thickness so that we can see our apron. So the way that we can do that, is just tap the P key, single click, then move your mouse up. And in this case, we're gonna assume that this is gonna go maybe three and a half inches. So I'll just type in a value of 3.5 and hit the enter key. So what we have now is we have a table top and we have a table apron. And then we also have an extra face in here that I'm actually gonna click on and delete. So now all we have is we just have this apron and this object down below. Well, I wanna take this apron and I want to put it in a group because I don't want this geometry accidentally merging with something that we create later. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna triple click. When you triple click something, it selects all of the connected geometry. So notice how all of this turns blue, just like this. And so what we wanna do now is we wanna right click on this. We wanna click on the button for make group. So now we have a group that makes up our tabletop. We have a group that makes up our apron. Well now, we need to give our table some legs. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna use a special kind of object called a component. It's like a group, but everything you create with it is connected together. So let's start by drawing a rectangle based on this corner. So activate the rectangle tool by tapping R, mouse over this point, and then single click. Then move your mouse in this direction. And we're just gonna type in a value of, let's say these are gonna be two inches by two inches. So I'm just gonna type in two comma two and hit the enter key. What that's done is that's created a table leg shape right here. So we're gonna push pull this up to this corner, but we wanna do something a little bit different, right? Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a taper to this leg. So let's go ahead and let's push pull this up so that this is aligned with this corner. So you can just click anywhere on this edge in order to align that right here. Well now, 
what I want to do is I want to model the rest of the leg. And so you would think that we would just use this tool and just extrude it all the way out, but there's one other step we want to do first. And that step is we want to tap the control key. So when we tap the control key with this tool open, notice what that does is that creates a new face when we extrude this the second time. So that means that if I create this table leg and then I scale this, instead of the entire leg scaling outward, it's only going to scale to this point. So we'll talk more about that in a second. But for now, just take this and just click with the push-pull tool tap the control key to make sure you're in create new face mode, and then just type in a value of, we'll call it three feet for right now. So what we've done is we've modeled out a single table leg, right? So we have a table leg in here facing this way. And so right now that's gonna act as our table leg. Well, we want to have a table leg on every single corner, right? Tables need four legs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this object we're going to make it a component and then we're going to copy it. So if we were to right click on this right now and make it a group, so we've selected it, we made it a group, and let's say I copied it. Don't worry about how I do this because we're going to do this in a minute. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. But let's say I made a copy over here and then I made a copy over here, right? So I made another copy over here. And again, we'll talk about how to do that in a second. But right now, let's say that one of my table legs need, or let's say that I wanted my table legs to be a different style, right? So let's say I wanted to add a taper to this. Well, the problem is if I go in here and change one leg using the scale tool, I would have to go in and either recopy this or re, um, recreate the taper that I did over here on these other legs as well. So what we want to do instead is I'm doing a control Z and I'm going back. And I'm going back to right before I created a group. Well, instead of creating a group for things that repeat inside of SketchUp that you might have multiple copies of, you want to make what's known as a component. And so if we were to select this and right click, notice how there's an option for make group, but there's also an option for make component. Well, for make component, if we click on that, it's going to give us a new window, right? And this window tells us to do a few different things. It tells us to set the component definition or the name. So we would just call this table leg. And we want to make sure glue to is not set to anything. We're not going to use any of these functions for right now. Make sure these are not checked and we're going to click on OK. And so what that's done is instead of creating a group, we've created a component. And I'll show you what that means in a second. But first, let's make a copy. And so you might think that you want to use a control C and a control V in order to do that. You actually don't want to do this that way. You could do that. You could do a control C to copy, control V to paste, and then you could place this on this corner. But notice how I'm having to make a bunch of different adjustments in order to get all of that to fit. What we want to do instead is we want to use a trick where we use the move tool in order to create this copy. So the move tool works by selecting an object, then activating the move tool, either by clicking on it over here or by tapping the M key. So I'm going to select an object and tap the M key. Notice how this turns into a cursor. Well, what we want to do is we want to set a base point. We want to click on this corner right here. And again, single click, don't click and drag. Well, notice how when I move my mouse, this object is moving based on that base point. Well, what we want to do is we want to tap the control key on our keyboard. So when we tap the control key on our keyboard, what that does is that puts us in copy mode. That means that instead of moving this object, as soon as you tap control, you get the little plus next to your cursor and it creates a copy of whatever you have selected. So then I can hold the shift key to lock this to the red axis, move my mouse over this corner and I can click. And so what I've done is I've created a copy of my table leg. Well now let's create a copy over here. So the way we're going to do that is just click, do a shift click in order to select both of these and then we're going to tap the M key on our keyboard. Once we tap the M key on our keyboard, we want to mouse over this corner right here because that's going to be the corner that aligns with this point and we're going to single click. So we've single clicked and that's moving our object. Well, when you tap control, that's going to put you in copy mode. So now if I click on this corner, notice how this created a copy with these other two legs. 
So now we have our table. And so one thing I wanted to point out with this is let's go back and talk about the components again. So because we created these as components rather than groups, you're going to notice something interesting. So if I double click into this object and I start selecting these faces, notice how when I select these faces, the faces in the other objects select as well. The reason for that is because we created this a component as a component, that means that these are now linked. Meaning if I make an edit to one of these, the others will change as well. This is really powerful because that means now if I decide to change the style of my table leg, I only have to create one component instead of, or I only have to edit one component instead of editing multiple groups. And people always ask me when to use groups and when to use components. So as a general rule, if there's something you're copying, so if you're going to have more than one of something in your model, you want to use components. If you're only going to have one of something, like a set of walls or your tabletop, you can just use a group. But now, I'm just going to add a little taper to these legs. So we've double clicked inside of this component. Now I want to click and drag across this face, I want to tap the S key to activate the scale tool. And then I'm just going to hold the control key down and I'm going to click and drag this in. Well, what that's doing is that's scaling this table leg in based on the central point. When you hold control with the scale tool active, that's going to pick the central point as the point around which you scale. And notice how when we made this change, the other legs changed as well. So now we're just going to do a little cleanup and flip our table over. So. We're going to tap the E key and click and drag across these guides in order to erase them. Then we're going to go back to our select tool, we're going to select our table, and we're going to activate the rotate tool. So tap Q on your keyboard or come click down here and click on the rotate tool. And what we want to do is we want to move our mouse over this so that this is aligned with the green axis, right? And you can see how this turns green based on this face that I turn it over. So this is guessing what direction we want to rotate this based on where our mouse is. One other thing to know is you can also lock this to an axis by tapping an arrow key. So when you first activate this tool by tapping Q, you can tap left, right, or up in order to lock this to different axes. Well, in this case, I'm just going to tap left to lock it to the green axis. I'm going to mouse over this corner and I'm going to click to set a base point. I'm going to click again in order to set a rotation point. And then I'm going to move my mouse until this is rotated 180 degrees and I'm going to click to set my final point. So basically what we've done is we've taken our table and we've rotated it so that it's facing the proper direction. You could also do this with the scale tool or other tools as well. But finally, I'm just going to take this, I'm going to move it into place with the move tool. So select your table, tap the M key, click on this corner, and then click on your origin. So that is an easy way to create a table inside of SketchUp. And in this situation, let's make a little change. Let's make everything a bit shorter. So I'm just going to select this. So I've selected this face. I'm going to use the move tool. I'm just going to move this geometry up. Maybe we'll call it eight inches for right now. So I'm going to make my table a little bit shorter. So then I'm just going to move this back down and we're going to call it good to go. So that's where I'm going to end this video. That should give you a pretty good idea of how groups and components work and how to use them inside your models. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions or what you'd like to learn how to do next. Is there a specific kind of woodworking function that you'd like to learn? Or do you just want to learn more about SketchUp in general? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.